Right now. Right now. now. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Hello, everyone. Trevor Lund. Am I saying that correctly? That's it. Yeah, pretty All much. All right. Some say Lund, but they're mm -hmm. more dick. <laughs> Trevor Lund. Huh? Okay. Da? Okay. All right. Got it. Time. Here's a handy tip. You can organize all of your wall wart power supplies in gallon freezer Ziploc bags. Makes it easy to tidy them up. Maybe get some Velcro straps. You know, it's the little things. It is. So we're like supposed to be sitting down, otherwise our heads oh, are getting chopped off. I mean, it's just brain shots. <laughs> it's just advertising power strips. Yeah, I guess saying. I should tell you the rules, you know. Okay, yeah, I'm learning this. I'm not much of a vlogger. Yeah. Vlogging is what we're doing. We're This is vlogging, or, you know, we're making a video, and I will edit out stuff. and Most you know, of this. Most, most of this. this right here. But yes, Trevor Lund. Cheers. Saxophone player, who I just found out, another alumni of University of North Texas, served in the military before that, you know, from Washington State. From Washington from State. From Washington State. So, you know, but not Seattle. No, from Vancouver, which is not the Canadian side. Right. South Washington. But, I don't know, Trevor, you told me your story earlier, but for the people, if you want to give us a quick recap. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I always, I never really took saxophone seriously in high school. Um, I, I had an opportunity to play for the Marine Corps band in Hawaii, which was kind of a lucky draw. So at 22, I went and did that, started learning from some people who were good mentors. A lot of people directed me to UNT because they went there or they were part of that big band school. Of thought well, the military obviously is very yeah. structured playing a lot of marches and whatnot yeah a lot of guys out of unt end up in the military yeah it's funny it almost went full circle for me i almost went back to the military okay but uh one of the gigs i did in dallas which is an amazing place to gig it's a great creative scene a great top 40 scene if you want to just be a, a, a jobber as they call it it's still gigging but you're doing weddings and you're playing like taylor swift songs but even still, you can make money playing jazz, funk, R&B, neo-soul, all the stuff is there. It's a great scene. Um, but yeah, the opportunity to be there and grow with the musicians that are actually in an active scene is, is one of the best bits about UNT. Yeah. So I think your experiences are the same, you know? Totally. I got there, you know, maybe a medium-sized to big-sized fish from a small pond and was immediately thrown back into the... Blown away, yeah? Yeah, blown away. Yeah, Just like... you find out what real, like... Prodigy kids look like, and it's scary. You know? But everyone also, they find they find their place. They find what they're good at, and they work on that, and develop into something totally valid. Seriously. So speaking of valid things that we've developed, uh, oh, what is this for me? Just can you plug that over? Yeah. Okay. yeah, we have a pedal board here. We have... Quite a pedal board. You said you've been working on this since 2015, so this is a four-year-old board, a four-year project for you. Well, in 2015, I bought a GT100, and I tried to do things with that, which was okay. Um, it was like the boss's old guitar right. multi-effects pedal. Like two buttons and a rocker? Yeah, it was a, it was kind of a beast, but it was very synthetic, so I, I started venturing out for some pedals that would maintain the quality sound of the saxophone, but also just add these effects that you hear with guitar and keyboards all the time with a very organic sound, um, which I found TC Electronics, it, it's two, two birds with one stone because all of their pedals are developed. So it's this thing called dry through technology. So your dry sound goes through unaffected and the effect, be it reverb or delay or whatever, is added to it. So it maintains so, the sound of the saxophone. It's an additive volume knob. Yeah, so like here on the 7-Up, well, it's, it's just a basic you know, version of its bigger brother. But uh, yeah. you have dry mix with the wet mix separate. Same with the MXR bass envelope filter, you've got a separate dry mix. It's very important to me on all the pedals right. that I have that you don't lose the sound. It doesn't start to sound digital and sound like you're playing through toys. You want it to sound like an affected saxophone. All right. This is by a company called Vega Music Tools. It's um, the intro mic. It's an amazing piece of technology. A man named Victor developed this. Uh, it's a very small microphone. You can see inside there, maybe. And this rests on the body of the neck, on the inside of the neck. So as you put it on, you slide this in here, this piece. And this flat cable just slides right under the mouthpiece, onto the neck. And that makes it... Well, Vega makes it waterproof or water-resistant, 
hydrophobic as it were. Let me get this off here. So it resists the moisture that gets built up while you're playing. And it's flat okay. enough to just slide right under. So you don't notice like that there's an extra piece in your mouthpiece? Yeah, people have asked about intonation or like if it is a free, kind free of, blowing. It would add a baffleish kind of effect, <laughs> I'd assume. You would expect it to. I haven't noticed anything. And, uh, and then the results on the other side of it. If, it, if there is one that you can notice, I, I haven't noticed it, but it's nominal. So the, the quality of the sound though is the important thing here. It's crazy. Because it's inside the neck, so with a typical bell mic, um, even the AMT ones that are really nice, if you blow a low B flat, all that sound is going out, the pressure is coming straight out of the bell. It's not being vented out of any of the tone holes. Ideally. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> so you get much boomier sound out of a, a traditional bell mic, um, as opposed to if you're playing a C sharp um, or a concert B natural that's going to be wide open a lot so, of the sound is coming out the sides yeah he's talking about if i have all the keys closed the air sound pressure whatever is going to go very focused right into that microphone there however if all the keys are open the sound is spread out more out of here it's further away it's not as direct you're not going to get nearly the sound power you got a really noticeable difference in texture yeah so with this Every note from the top to bottom resonates pretty much the same way because it's in a concentrated controlled chamber. So because it's the top of the instrument, you don't have any of that concentrated air pressure coming out straight out of the yeah, bell. it's all the same. Everything is vibrating inside that neck. And part of that is picked up tactilely, and part of it is that small microphone that you see in there. And I had my doubts about it. My friend Emilio Mesa hooked me up with this. And uh, man, it took me a long time to pull the trigger because not, not a lot, it's kind of expensive. But the first time I heard it, I was blown away. I couldn't believe that I could be in a live situation directly in front of two monitors and the mains behind me, and never do I get feedback. Problems that I used to have with the NXR, the phaser, problems that I used to have with the wah pedal that you described. You Yeah, with my wah pedal. Put cardboard on it? Definitely, because this, this microphone is another way of thinking it more exposed to the amp sound. So if you've got a feedback loop between the amp and the microphone, it's going to happen as opposed to his, which is shielded by the metal of his neck. It's twofold too. As, as well, you don't have any of the background noise of a drummer or a really loud bass. Yeah. All that gets filtered out, especially in combination with the, the noise gate that I have as well. So, so we can we can do a, maybe a test of that later because I yeah. like experiments and tests. Oh, for sure. So I'll do go a snare drum. Uh, no, like a I, cowbell. Or I have I have some whacking buckets. Some whacking buckets. <laughs> um, if we wanted to do an audio test, maybe we'd use white noise to synthesize the noise. Oh, wow. so. There's noise on the ship. <laughs> That's usually what the color sounds like. I thought... <laughs> That's just the 60 second hum that you hear. Yeah. Dirty. So this is a water drum, and think, since he works on a ship, I'm assuming he's usually competing with the roar of the ocean when he's trying to perform. It's and pretty loud. <laughs> mostly the challenge is trying to stand upright while performing, like not falling over. Right, so you know, keeping his balance as well as overcoming the roar of the sea, like, requires microphone technology. So we can test this. I'll make ocean sounds while he plays, and we'll see how much ocean sound shows up on the direct recording. Versus the live recording. Science. Science. Three, two, one, go, huh? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Smack it. <laughs> Smack it hard. 
That's left handed. I don't know if that's gonna go through. Yeah. Let's see, that'll be the test. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Grazing the grass, <laughs> more or less. Echo cool, chuckle. man. Makes me want to have one of those loop stations again, those classic boss loop stations. Dude, there's all kinds of these two pedal little guys popping out. Yeah, they're cheap, fairly cheap. Fairly Remember? cheap, yeah. yeah. You get them used. The old ones. So, wise idea, recommend. It's like baptizing yourself in sound. <laughs> a little bit. You know I mean? you didn't, loop, didn't lost in a loop for a while. It's like meditation. It sorts. is. Repetition legitimizes. Mm. Adam Neely. Yeah, it's almost... <laughs> it's amazing because with a tool that's built for repetition, I feel like we didn't repeat ourselves at all. Like it was no. just through composed the entire way. Like there's a, you know, day-night cycle. You can't escape that, right? But it's good, man. It's what you do over that. It's up to you. Go ahead and send. So, dude. Send. Let's, oh, dude, let's do the Jets Adventure uh, Jet. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, yeah. dude. Brother. Brother. Pity the fool. <laughs> yes, that's totally. Mr. T. I, did I say Mr. T? No, you didn't. That's but I'm not going to throw it in there because it's, like, it's a worthy mention. You know? It's a self-made man. There's... <laughs> it's true. Yeah, man. Mr. T. Yourself. At least three billion. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> man, I've been having a great time. I'm glad I came here today. Dude, man. this has been fun. Mostly for the sax. This has been a fun detour. Dude, swing through Seattle anytime. And Pick one more time, saxophone, you want to hold up? This is Trevor just bought the saxophone today, it's ladies and gentlemen. Today. So, so, shiny black cannonball. Let's oh, about with a stone. All right. Stone and all the uh, side keys. Man. Oh, let me see the engraving here. Let's see this. Oh, it's got okay. It does have the raven on it. The raven it's on got it. the raven on it. The raven. It's got kind of like an Arthurian carving on the front. It's classy sax. Yeah, the stone as it's opposed to the sword. If you're going to go Arthurian, yeah, hmm. you know, yeah, so something has horn. to hold on to the sword until it's time. It's a beautiful horn. Yeah, well made. All right. This is the. <laughs>